In today's video, we're going to be talking about the upcoming pattern. We'll also be going over the current conditions and breaking down the upcoming severe weather. Let's get straight into this video, though. And first things first, we're taking a look at our current radar conditions. We can see a lot of this coastal activity here on the eastern United States, and this is kind of heading in this direction. Eventually, we're going to see a lot of this activity uh, bundled up and actually making its way onshore. So we'll see that on the model guidance. We also have some storminess up here for the northwest and especially here in the north central United States that I just pointed to there. But really, outside of there, I mean, look at this really quiet here for the eastern half of the country, the southern half of the country, really the northwestern fourth of the country is really where we're seeing uh, all of the activity outside of a little bit of the eastern United States. So let's go ahead and zoom in to the very northwestern United States here. Let's see. So we have some isolated showers moving on shore to Washington and Oregon. These are very, very spotty, as we can see, on and off rainfall, and for the mountains, snowfall here. So for this range right here, let's go ahead and take it a little bit further south here, because we do have some activity, similar activity actually happening here in Northern California, more scattered to isolated pockets of rainfall and snowfall for the higher elevation regions, and then inland here for Nevada and portions of uh, the Sierra Nevadas there, we do see quite a bit of snowfall taking place as well in a more isolated to scattered fashion here. As we head a little bit further north here, we could see that there is some snowfall here for Idaho, Oregon, Montana, uh, and surrounding states taking place there, especially southern Idaho. And then we see some of this snowfall also for Montana, Wyoming, Colorado taking place as well. Uh, pretty light to moderate snowfall, uh, and we see rainfall in some of those surrounding areas as well. And then as we move a little bit further eastward, we can see where a lot of this heavier activity is taking place here. Uh, we can see light to moderate showers, a lot of that moderate actually happening in here, yellow, orange. And then we can see in this pocket right here, we're seeing some thunderstorm activity taking place. Even some severe thunderstorm warnings coming through with that. Um, very, very stormy for this region for South Dakota, North Dakota, and Minnesota. And this is a lot of the same areas where we're going to be seeing most of the severe weather over the next few days. So, of course, stay tuned to later in the video where we're going to be taking a look at the Storm Prediction Center, as always. We also do have some showery activity happening here, so keep that in mind as well for Wisconsin and the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. There are some showers taking place there also. Now... We see this showery activity here. Really the only area that's even seen any of this come on shore is the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Uh, so that is also worth noting. But really most of it has stayed offshore here uh, for the most part. I guess the Delmarva here, uh, we've seen some of that activity uh, on shore as well. So this could get closer and closer over time and we could see a lot of those cold showers. It is going to be really cold along the east coast here. We do have see some of these showers along the Florida coast here as well. Um, and they are making their way on shore at times, but this is just barely scraping the East Coast here. Barely, barely scraping that East Coast. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at the upcoming pattern. That's for storminess, temperatures, upcoming rainfall, upcoming snowfall, and then at the end, we'll take a look at that Storm Prediction Center. Now, here we are taking a look at the uh, upcoming storminess, we can see that we're going to see this low develop in here, and it's going to move further northwards. We're going to see this move up into Canada. Again, watch this area because this is where a lot of our severe weather is going to be taking place. Jet stream is about like this right now, so we see a lot of warm air heading into the eastern half of the country outside of the east coast because along this region, we are seeing this low really bring down the temperatures just for that region. It's very, very uh specific to that region and really outside of there the eastern two-thirds are very very warm uh, the only other cold area is going to be the northwestern united states so that is the pattern that we're kind of in this is by the time we're reaching about tuesday things will be very quiet across the nation as you can see cold for the west uh warm here for the central united states and a lot of the northeastern united states but again this area in the southeast is just going to be very cold uh, around this time frame now, for Wednesday, things are quieter too, although we do see some thunderstorm and severe weather activity pick up in the central United States. Things will really, really get going. Thursday here, we see that as well. Further north this time around, we see storminess up there for the northeastern, or better yet, north central United States. And we do see some of this storminess coming on shore here uh, on Thursday. So we see quite a bit of that activity there for the eastern United States. So that is what is taking place. And that's going to stick around for quite a while. 
uh, until we get this trough mostly moving into the central United States. And I think that's what's going to force the ridge further eastward, which will force basically warm air to be able to come into the southeast again. So that's going to be as we're approaching uh, this upcoming weekend. So Saturday, Sunday is when I think the tides turn, okay? Uh, Friday is when things should be still kind of cold-ish. Saturday and Sunday is when things really change directions here, and we probably get some warmer temperatures around for the eastern United States. But we could see plenty of storminess. This is obviously as we approach the summertime pattern. Isolated and scattered thunderstorms won't be able to be ruled out any day, as you could see. Really, they're just popping up everywhere. And here, there will be areas where obviously there's more of that activity happening you know, with a low pressure system. But outside of that, I mean, scattered thunderstorms can't really be ruled out for most days. And we get all the way to the 19th of May at this point. Mostly we have a trough in the east here, which could bring some slightly below normal temperatures in here. But really things are looking rather warm later on for most of the United States, especially the northwest warms up. We could see plenty of rainfall taking place where there was snowfall. So the, the, the pattern is really going to switch up in the longer range. Now, here's the total precipitation here. So if you're anywhere in the whites, you're expecting nothing. If you're in the grays, you're expecting 0.1 inches or less of rainfall. Greens are going to be 0.1 to 0.5 inches of rainfall. Blues will be 0.5 to about an inch of rainfall. And then your yellows is going to be an inch to two inches. Reds are going to be two to six inches. And then if you're anywhere in the browns or grays, you're looking at about six to ten inches of rainfall, which is a significant amount obviously for a 10 day period here's the total snowfall and we can see there's less and less popping up here so there used to be you know feet and feet of snowfall maybe there's going to be about a foot here uh, in some of the highest amounts there in the northwestern united states so things are getting less and less snowy and as we approach june we should really see this recede to practically nothing so if you're anywhere in the grays here you're expecting a dusting if anything blues will be two to six inches of snowfall purples will be six to ten and then your pinks will be ten to twenty but we don't see anything above the ten to twenty inch range there uh so we don't expect any more than that but pastels would have been 20 to 48 inches plus but there is not none of that happening in the united states we do see some of that in canada though all right now what we're going to do is we're going to move on here and we're going to take a look at the upcoming temperature pattern and really just break that down and then break down the Storm Prediction Center as well later on. So here's the current temperature pattern. We can see that there is quite a bit of um, cold air here with this trough in the western United States. A lot of warmth here in the central United States because of this ridge. Uh, and then there's a lot of cold air along the eastern seaboard because of this low that is just hanging out right here. This has nothing to do with the trough. It's literally just a low that is bringing those temperatures down. And we'll see how long that lasts. Look at how everywhere else in the eastern United States has warmed up, except for just the eastern seaboard there, where cold air is just able to make its way on shore. I kind of like warm air this time of year. I'm kind of wishing this wasn't happening. So I, I can relate to a lot of you that are probably just wishing we could get into the summer-like temperatures, but this is really holding us back. It's currently 50 degrees outside in Virginia, which is far below normal for this time of year. Uh, really, really chilly to say the least. Uh, and that just sticks around. But again, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, this starts to, the, the tide starts to turn. This cold moves more towards the central United States and therefore the warmth is going to head more towards the eastern United States and therefore this cold is going to go ahead and move out. So we'll see this happen uh, over time. This is Wednesday, May 11th, Thursday, May 12th, Friday, May 13th, Saturday, May 14th. And look at that, the cold is almost completely dissipated. This trough is spread around for more of the western United States. And then by the time we reach Sunday, we see warm temperatures for the eastern seaboard. So again, by the time we're reaching this weekend, we'll see things dramatically change. We're looking at about 10 to 15 degrees below normal right now along the southeastern coast. And by the time we're reaching this point, we'll probably be taking a look at about 5 to 10 degrees above normal. So we're looking at maybe a 20 degree swing or so uh, potentially for a lot of folks uh, about 15 to 20 degree temperature swing from about now on Monday, May 9th, all the way till Sunday, May 15th. Uh, so we're going to see big time changes in the upcoming pattern. And as we move beyond this, uh, the sad thing is that we see a trough move into the eastern United States right after. So we're going to get a brief warm up, but this is going to cause some colder temperatures. But as you can see, during the daytime temperatures, this is the high temperatures on Tuesday, May 17th. Uh, we still get above normal for a lot of the areas that were below normal. So the coast still is able to manage to get above normal. Uh, Wednesday, we actually get a lot of warmth here in the south, uh, as you can see. So 
uh, really the tides completely turn. We see cold bottled up up here in the northern United States and then a lot of warmth down here. To me, this tells me that there's going to be quite a bit of severe weather potential in here because when the cold is even colder than normal and the, the south is even warmer than normal, uh, what we end up seeing happening is that clash of temperatures is even more dramatic. Um, that's just what can happen as a result of this. So we'll see what ends up happening. Uh, that is rather concerning. And obviously, as we move closer into this more medium to long range, we'll see more of what to expect. Uh, but that's all we have for the temperatures for now. So let's go ahead and move on and talk about the Storm Prediction Center. All right, now here's the day one categorical outlook. And as you can see, the north central United States is getting all that severe weather right now. Uh, we see a large general thunderstorm risk up there in the north. Uh, and then a smaller one there in Texas, those lighter green areas. And that's where we expect general thunderstorms, okay? But severe weather is possible anywhere, so always heed all watches, warnings, and advisories uh, at all times. Also, the darker green region is going to be our marginal risk of severe weather, and that's where we expect isolated severe weather to take place. And then the two yellow regions is our scattered uh, severe weather area, and that's called a slight risk, but that's where we expect scattered severe weather to take place. So that's for Monday, May 9th, today, day one, day two here. We have also three general thunderstorm risks there in the lighter greens. Again, heat every watch, warning, and advisory as always. We have the two darker green regions, one up there for the upper Midwest and Great Lakes, and then one there for the south central United States. That's where we expect isolated severe weather to take place. And then we have our slight risk of severe weather down there for Texas, the yellow area, where we expect scattered severe weather to be possible. Now for day three, we get a much larger uh, general thunderstorm risk here. It's all over the place. This is the weirdest looking outlook I've ever seen probably just all over the place here, but we expect general thunderstorms in that lighter green region. So heed every watch warning and advisory though, because again, expect the unexpected to be possible at all times. You don't want to be caught off guard. Uh, our marginal risk there in the darker green is again where we expect scattered to, or better yet, isolated severe weather. The yellow area is where we expect scattered severe weather to take place in that slight risk up there for the upper Midwest. We have two extended range outlooks to show you guys though. Uh, and we have one here uh, for the upper Midwest on day four, which is looking pretty bad on Thursday, May 12th here. Uh, we have a 15% chance of severe weather there within the yellow region and then a 30% chance of severe weather within that orange region. Uh, and you're probably wondering, what does that actually mean? Well, we were just taking a look at the categorical outlooks and how this would translate to that, or probably will tomorrow, because day three will be tomorrow for this day. Uh, and then we will see it in the categorical outlook. So tune in tomorrow, of course. But basically, the yellow should translate to a slight risk. And then the orange should translate to an enhanced risk. That's usually what the they translate to, or at least that's what they should translate to um, at, at a minimum. For today's confidence tab, we're moving back down to a four out of six because we've basically moved into a point where we're going to be talking more about the extended range of things and looking towards the next pattern. That's what I feel like we're in right now as things are kind of calming down as of the next few days uh, for the most part. Out of Outside of Thursday, of course, things are looking pretty intense that day. So we're at a four out of six. For today's patron, highlighted today, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Lila LePan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I would also like to thank our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Kotalasa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Khaleesi also. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.